Welcome everyone to the Lost World Museum. My name is John Adolfi, and as always, we ask the important and provocative question, where did we come from? Did we come from apes, aliens, or Adam? And today we're going to talk about our journey. My wife and I went to the New York State Fairgrounds for the Rock and Gem Show. And uh, so I'm going to do a little slide presentation, show you some interesting fossils, and uh, give you a couple of alternative explanations as to the how fossils are made. And I hope you enjoy this. All right, so we went there and I'll tell you what, let me show you one of the favorite things that I saw there and that was this giant crystal. As you can see, my arms barely fit around this thing. Um, it was huge. And then there was a sister to it, so to speak. And you can see that there's iron uh, throughout that crystal. Very, very cool. Uh, they wanted $15,000 for that one and $22,000 for the other one. Um, both from Brazil, from my understanding. Okay. So then we went over to another table and my wife fell in love with this palm tree or palm fonds uh, fossil. It's just a, a palm leaf. Okay. She loved it so much that we ended up buying it. <laughs> and let me show you the close-up of this bad boy, okay? Now, I'm going to introduce this idea now <laughs> as opposed to later so you can start wondering about it. And that is, <clears throat> how do delicate items or living things such as this become fossilized? I mean, think about this for a second. Uh, this is very delicate. I mean, if you were to pluck one off the tree and just let it sit on the ground, what happens to it? it? Deteriorates, maybe a monkey will come over and eat it or whatever. You know, I'm just saying though, they don't last very long. Look how beautiful this is. Look how beautifully intact it is. And this is fossilized in either limestone or sandstone. Was it rapidly laid down, once it went down on the ground, that is, was it rapidly covered? Of course it was. Everybody will agree to that. But here's the question. Is this millions of years old and took millions of years or hundreds of thousands or even thousands of years to form the actual fossil itself, the exchange, that is, that takes place between minerals and the living tissue, so to speak, the cells? Or... Is it a worldwide flood 4,500 years ago? And some, you know, I'll tell you something. It's interesting that many people are not familiar with this concept or um, have um, very strong feelings about it. It's very interesting. Look at the comments and you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, think about this for a second. How do you fossilize raindrops? How do you do that? This is a replica of raindrops that have been fossilized. Take one more look at it. Fossilized raindrops. There's got to be something here going on that um, creates this environment for fossilization. Now, we've been told that for, for, for years, actually a couple hundred years, kicking off with this book by um, Charles Lyell, 1832. This, uh, this is 1832, this book right here, and it's called The Principles of Geology. And he basically pushed the envelope back from six to 10,000 years in a worldwide flood, 4,500 years. And my friends, that has, that, that theory or worldview has been going on for up to that point, 5,800 years. And he's the one that really basically popularized the idea of millions of years. He said that the earth was several hundred million years old. Okay. From there, we're now at 4.51 billion years. That is the Earth and life on Earth approximately three and a half billion years ago. Uh, you had some kind of proto-RNA or something on a minute scale that eventually became us today. So um, that's what we're questioning here. Let me just show you one more thing before we get a little bit further into this, and that is the second thing my wife fell in love with when she was there. She said, oh, I have to have this fossil. Well, we bought this one too, and this one's really heavy. It's 
It's Orthocaris, and Orthocaris is um, like a squid-like creature. And what this shows is, is mass mortality, meaning that a lot of things died uh, very close to one another and at the same time. Now, this is the backside of what you're seeing right there. And I'll turn it over, <laughs> and I'll show you the front side and get you a nice close-up of it. Those are all like squid-like creatures, all dying at the same time. What causes that? I mean, if you took, and they've done this before, they took a bunch of fish and they put them in a cage, dead, dead fish, and they sunk them four feet in the mud. Six weeks later, they took it back out. Guess what they found? Not fossilization beginning to start, but they found the fishes were disintegrated, completely gone. But yet, this is what they'll say. Oh, the dinosaur got close to the edge, fell in, and was covered with mud. Or the thing, da-da-da-da, was covered with mud. Friends, when they get covered with mud, unless there's something else at play here, they deteriorate. That's it. I mean, these are delicate things. Delicate items, delicate animals, delicate uh, uh, plants. I mean, how, there's the root ball. Of this how do it does something like this it's got to be rapid burial look the worldwide flood idea is this that over the course of 371 days okay it yes it did rain for six weeks but over the course of 371 days you had rain and then you had sediment sediment and you had movement and you had things getting buried and then very quickly sediment would come over on top of it whether it was settling down or whether a turbidite you know it's just kind of a fast moving layer of sediment came over and came down on it. That's the reason why a lot of the sediments that you see out there are laid down like this, all right? And not all of it, but a lot of it is like this and they're even, you know? And uh, you'll see uh, coal and sandstone and coal and sandstone. Think about this. If that's hundreds of thousands or millions of years of coal, sandstone, coal, sandstone, and intermixed with those, let's say, are dinosaur prints. And we've seen that at the Plexi River in limestone. And um, so you mean to tell me that a layer came down and then dinosaurs walked on it. And then it took a while for that to solidify. And as another layer came, which is over the course of time, hundreds of thousands of years, let's just say, and then another set of dinosaurs go across. And this is going on layer after layer, straight across. All right, let's just say that that is a theory. And then maybe that's the truth. I don't believe it is, but let's just say. The alternative is, is that chaos is taking place as the worldwide flood is, is in motion. And dinosaurs are going through the uh, mud and their footprints are being encapsulated. Uh, but they have to be encapsulated or preserved quickly. So within 24 hours, another wave of sediment comes through, let's just say, and, you know, and, 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 and seals it in. So that years later, 4,500 years later to be exact, we're going through the layers at the Paluxy River, as an example, in, in Glen Rose, Texas, and we're taking the layers off. Sometimes they're this thick, sometimes this, and underneath it, we find another layer of dinosaur footprints. What do I mean by that? And that is, is that the dinosaurs were running or walking all over the area, and it was happening over the course of days, weeks perhaps, but not 100,000 years, a million years, whatnot. Trilobites. Trilobites, according to evolution, are at the very bottom of the uh, the, 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 the strata that, uh, t that gives us the history, supposedly, of the... Of the of the life on earth. Now, at the bottom, according to evolution, things are simpler, okay? Simple to complex. Now, that's not evolution. That's, according to their own theory, that's just the way it happened. It doesn't mean that it, that it's, that it has to happen that way. They're just saying, okay, that's fine. So at the, because it have had, because it had um, happened that way, at the very bottom, you have the, the least, um, sophisticated or complex. But take a look at these trilobites. These are supposedly at the 500 million uh, level, you know, years ago. Do these look like simple creatures? 
Look at the complexity of their bodies. Look at the complexity of their legs. That is truly amazing. Now, from a worldwide flood perspective, of course these are going to be on the bottom. They're already bottom feeders. They hang out on the bottom. They're going to get covered over first. So you see, you've got basically same evidence, just two explanations. Now, this one right here isn't to prove anything one way or the other, but it's just plain cool. This is a megalodon tooth, and it was found off the course coast sorry, of North Carolina in the um, continental shelf. And the continental shelf is the... Um, the old beach. And let me tell you from a, um, from a creation, now uh, evolutionists and creationists both agree that the continental shelf was at one time uh, the original beach of the world. And that after the last ice age, uh, that after it melted, it melted and it created um, a rise in the level of the oceans approximately three to 500 feet. Um, the, uh, the timeline is different. Creationists will say 4,000 years ago, evolutionists 10,000 years ago, but they do agree that it's the same thing. So when you're looking at the continental shelf, you're looking at, from a creationist standpoint, the post-flood beaches of the world. And when you do go down there, many times you find sandy beaches where this continental shelf is. This was found in limestone, approximately 150 feet uh, underwater, and it's just plain cool. All right. Let me see what else we've got. Coal. Coal, according to evolution, is, uh, you know, the geology of evolution is, you know, 300 million years old. I mean, give or take, you know, it's, um, and uh, from a creationist standpoint, this is 4,500 years old. Now, the question is, can coal, and there's a stick in coal. Sorry about that. There, it's a, there we go. That's a, a stick in coal, and you'll see a uh, little leaves and uh, and impressions on the back same thing you've got one down here a stick coal is vegetable matter for the most part compressed heated and then it turned into this stuff that we mine and, and burn today it's um the question is how long does coal take to make they can make coal in the lab utilizing or replicating the same processes that we assume were taking place during the worldwide flood that is pressure heat mineralized water and we can we can take a piece of dowel wood and put it into a metal uh, pipe with caps with mineralized water put it in an arg argon furnace and uh, cook it for the course of several months and it turns into coal-like material interesting um, are there any other examples of where the processes of geological formations happens rapidly well here's one and this is a little teddy bear that we um, had placed in a mineral bath in Karlavi Veri um, in uh, uh, the Czech area. And they, uh, this is what happens after six weeks. The Czech Republic, excuse me, six weeks. Now, let me, let me here, here's what it sounds like. And before you ask, <laughs> that little nub or whatever sticking out the top there, that's nothing more than the, uh, the plastic uh, where, the, um, where the little tag is, okay? So these are the same, exact same. It's just that this spent six weeks in their mineral bath. There's probably a good eighth of an inch of uh, material, and it weighs, I don't know, at least twice as much as this, if not three times. What does it prove? Well, think about this for a second. Sandstone. What's sandstone made out of? Sand, right? So you compress it, you heat it, or whatever, and it turns into, that is sand, turns into stone. You take particles that are suspended in water and you concentrate them and let them lay, let them fuse together. And what do you have? You have a little stone bear. So, you know, in conclusion, folks, all I'm asking is, is that or I'm inviting you, is to explore this idea. Is it apes, aliens, or Adam? And if it's Adam, then all of this evidence right here can be interpreted in a different way, and I believe when you stack it up, it can make logical sense. Does evolution make logical sense? In a way, it does. 
and there's been 200 years of gathering all this with some of the most brilliant minds to make it look as logical, scientific uh, as possible. It is science, according to science. <laughs> but just because something is logical doesn't mean it's correct. So, apes, aliens, or Adam, thank you very much for taking time watching our presentation, and you guys have a wonderful day.